Hey, hey, people, Johnny here. Do you want to make indie game? Do you want to make money from making indie game? Then you have come to the right channel. Let's say that indie games can be divided into three categories, bronze, silver, and gold. Below 100,000, above 100,000, and gold are games that sell over 1 million copies. Now let's pretend that you will earn $1 for every copy sold. Since most of your income comes from heavy discounts and then there are fees, taxes and stuff like that, we are not technically pretending. Anyways, I have so far released 4 games. We are going to exclude the last one because it was released recently and the statistics aren't ready yet. If we categorize my first 3 games, this is where they end up. Now I bet you clicked on this video because you want to know how much money the average indie dev makes. That is not the right question. The right question is, how can you make more than the average indie dev? Because this is average, and you don't want to do average. So buckle up, your boy Johnny here is going to show you how to strike silver. Because I don't know how to strike gold. Yet. But before we start, a word from our sponsor. Raid Shall No Legends. I can't believe that actually worked. Shall No Legends 2 is my newest indie game, and it's 40% off right now on all three platforms. So go ahead and buy yourself 10 copies on each platform, trust me it's the right thing to do. And if you're watching this in the future, then please wish this dead so you don't miss it in the next sale. Alright, I'm done sponsoring my own video, let's get back to it. The first thing we need to do is to find out why this game did so well while the other ones did not. And we're going to start with the screenshots. Here is a screenshot from one of my bronze tier games. This screenshot doesn't exactly excite you to reach for the purchase button, does it? Perhaps not even the wishlist button. So now let's have a look at the screenshot from my silver tier game. You can already see the difference. I bet a few of you felt a bit of nostalgia coursing through your veins as soon as you saw this image. This one screenshot pretty much sells the game. It tells you exactly what this game is and the store description and the video trailer is just the icing on the cake. The explanation to why this game sold and this one didn't is simple. This game looks better than this one. When you are in the process of making a game, your main marketing question should be, is my game presentable? This can only be done by showing your game step by step while developing it. Every month or even every week, show screenshots and clips of your game in the right communities and see how people react to them. These communities are not just a place for marketing. They are a haven for researching what people want and how they react to different types of content. One perfect place is actually Facebook. On Facebook, if you upload multiple pictures in a single post, people can react and comment on individual images of the same post. This is important and I can show you why. In this post, I got 7 likes on the post itself, but this image on its own got 10 likes and multiple comments. This tells me that I should have this screenshot on my store page. Here are a few recommended Facebook indie dev communities. Next, I would like to recommend two subreddits, r slash pixel art and r slash destroy my game. The first one only works if you are making a pixel art game, and it's not just for games, it's for all kind of pixel art. The second one is my go-to place for slightly harsh criticism. A lot of people think that Destroy My Game is a bit cruel with their criticism. Honestly, I believe that they are not cruel enough. Now let's move on to an exercise you can do at home. Go to Steam and browse a few dozen games and see what captures your eye. Which games makes you want to wishlist or buy them just from the first screenshot alone. And then learn from them. Seriously, just from the first screenshot alone. So, what can we summarize so far? To be a successful developer, at least the silver tier, you need to spend 50% of your time developing the game and 50% of your time learning about what the world wants from you and your game and somehow create a marriage of what you want to make and what the world wants you to make. Within that 50% time, you also need to do marketing. Marketing doesn't just bring eyes to your game, it also brings early feedback to your game, which leads to certain improvements and sometimes a change in direction. This doesn't just apply to game devs. Even as a YouTuber, I have to do the same thing in order to succeed. Half my time spent on my YouTube career is done by making the video itself and the other half is spent on learning about the algorithm and researching other successful channels. Another advice, don't put too many years into one project. But don't put too little into it either. On average, I would say that a game worth distributing and a game worthy of the silver tier should have at least two years of development spent on it. My recent game, Shannon Legends 2, 
took me five years to make, and as a result, the game has a lot more content compared to its predecessor. But ordinary folks who browse the store might not see it that way. So in the end, this may have been a bad move. Not to mention that if you work on a project for five years and it doesn't sell, you're going to feel terrible. At least with a two-year project, you can handle the loss. Also, the more frequent releases you have, the more frequently you learn from the market. My biggest mistake with this game was that I kinda shut myself out from the world and just worked on the game non-stop, without doing much marketing for it. I just assumed that since my first game did well, this sequel would also do well. Little did I know that the world around me was changing, and the market was changing with it. Shutting myself out and working non-stop on my project prevented me from seeing the early warnings that would have stopped me from undertaking such a massive project. Well, this is it. I hope this video was useful, thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the channel for more indie dev and marketing videos. 2023 was a pretty mediocre year for me, but one good thing that came out of it was this YouTube channel, and next year I will be investing even more time on it, so expect a lot more content. Please subscribe if you already haven't, and don't forget to treat yourself this holiday season.